Hello my lovelies and welcome back to a Kooky Corner of YouTube. Today I'm doing something I've had on my list for an absolute age and um, it's kind of linked to the coughs but not. It's, it's, it's a similar method um, but I just wanted to make myself a little vessel. And this little vessel, as I say, has been on my list for so long. <laughs> I've, I've had it there and I, I must make that vessel. And um, during Annie's um, Saturday night in live stream, I actually made a start on making my vessel. So I thought I'd take you through the steps that I have done to get this. It's quite sturdy. Um, it's got a nice solidy ish base and um yeah it's pretty cool um i'm really happy with it you can put all sorts of little bits in it you could put threads in it if you wanted to you could store like um you could put your oats in it if you wanted to it's a nice it's a nice size i like it and i like to have little decorative pieces around me you could put buttons in it if you wanted to it'd be a nice little button container um or anything you wanted i mean i'm just i'm just giving suggestions here but you know anything you wanted and you can do it in any of the colors that you like i've gone autumnal because it is feeling very autumnal outside even though the summer hasn't finished yet officially but it does feel um the weather's turned a little so yeah anyway enough of my ramble let me show you what you're going to need to make this so because I wanted a sturdy middle, because I want the sides to be able to support themselves, um, I know on the cuffs you could get that, but I thought with the height of it, I might want it to be a little more sturdy. And so to that end, I have on my person some of this Hessian ribbon, which is quite cool. It's got finished ends on it, so it's not going to fray that way. It will fray that way, but it's not going to be a huge big deal. The measurements of the one that I have made, but you can make yours any size you like, is uh, 24 centimetres or nine and a half inches. So 24 centimetres of this takes me to there. And I need my scissors to snip that off at that point. So 24, let's go in. And do a snippage right up there. You don't have to be exact. You, you kind of. I winged it the first time. I didn't even know what size I'd snipped off until I measured it. I kind of just went with um, just a just a piece of the ribbon. You can see I've got all my scraps out here, having fun. Um, so yeah, about twenty-four centimeters, and that equates to about nine and a half inches if you want to do it in inches so you have your piece of fabric and very much in a similar way to where we made the bracelets and lots of other things that we've made on here we're going to lay down our fabrics i've got a whole selection of little fabrics here that i'm going to pick from to make my um choices from should i say okay so i'm gonna go in i'm sticking with the autumnal theme uh, some of this has been gifted to me and it's absolutely beautiful this is from um, nancy i actually love it so much she very kindly sent me some pieces of this batik fabric that i am loving so i do want some of that in there i could change all this round in a minute <laughs> but for now it's staying there i've got this green that i really like so i'm gonna snip some of that off to about there and i'm going to mm, don't want it that way don't want it that way i might want it that way i'll take this a bit more off S saving all my snippings because they will come in handy for something along the way so if i take it to there that's pretty good okay we'll go with that for now 
I have got this beauty here which I kind of like to go that way maybe for now for now it's going that way dibbling into fabrics one of my favorite things to do to dibble around in fabrics Ooh, I've got some of this beauteous stuff that I got <laughs> it, was, it was wrapped around a rum bottle <laughs> in uh, when, when we went to the Caribbean and we bought some more rum so that I get some more of this and that's my that's my story and I'm sticking to it see I'm not sure I'm not sure whether oh, that over there perhaps maybe and then I could go that, that, or mm, that's too even, Stephen, to me. It has to go that way, I think. I like the different levels. I like it to look um, mix and matchy. Although that's mm -hmm. maybe I just snip some more. <laughs> that's nothing left of this piece in a minute. Hmm. Take that out for a minute. <laughs> Put this one back in. Kind of like that. Yeah, let's go with that. Dabbling back in. I've got some lovely bits that were sent to me. So I'm going to snip off this dark a bit, I think. I like to have a mix of lights and darks in here. It is autumnal, but yeah. Oh, do I want to take that up there and bring that down? Hmm. Maybe I do. Let's snip that off there. I don't know how we're going on. The lights just started poking through my window again. I like that. Yeah, I'm going with that. So that, like that so far, is good. So I'm doing this thoroughly so you can see my, my choice methods. I don't always leave things in the place they start off in. So I will sometimes just switch them around. Okay, what else have we got here? Oh, this is nice. So let's, could leave on the salvage, but I'm going to take it off. Save that for something else. And that can go there. Rather beautiful, that is. I like that. Uh, I want to try and pick up some more of these tealy colours somewhere along the line. So I'm going to go through my stash and see what I've got. And I have got this. And I want the top edge of this bit. Maybe. Maybe there. That's nice because I'm getting those colours coming through as well. Yes, I am liking this. Okay, uh, that. Okay, I want that one up there. Get rid of that thready end. See, the ends of this hessian ribbon will fray, so you just have to take a little bit of extra care while you're sewing it up, but it's not a big, huge deal. Um, you could tape them if you wanted to stop them from fraying, but I'm not that hugely bothered about it, so I'm just going to leave them to do their thing. Now, what else I've got on here that I want to pick out a bit more of? Dabbling through... I have got more fabrics, it's just that these ones I've actually got literally on a pile in my desk. On my desk, should I say. And I want to kind of limit myself to these. I've got some Halloween fabrics there as well. 
see that's the other part of that so I don't want to use that oh decisions decisions maybe a bit of this green thing and like oh it's too much green altogether <laughs> uh, what else have I got that I can put in there see that's pretty oh like, let's go with some of this this is like um a bluey ferny yeah i'm liking that let's let's grab some of that so a couple more bits huh and i'm gonna don't want that to overlap maybe i do maybe i do yeah yeah i like that and so now i've just got one little last piece to go down this side um so I might want to bring some of this back in again. Hopefully this is going to be big enough. Just trim it down a bit. There we go. So this is my layout. Now you can uh, do this many ways. You could take a picture of this, um, obviously to remember where everything goes. I am a renegade <laughs> and although they do get in my way I'm going to go with the clips so clippies where are you put them somewhere I actually put them ah, there in beautiful clips I'm hoping this is recording okay because the sun has now decided to stream through my window so at various points I am going to clip this down just to hold it while I get that first row of stitching in there and on the end here and because of the size that it is it's really cool so all I have to do is flip this round now the clips on the other side i love these clips have i said that before i'm sure i have <laughs> uh, clips of joy stop pins from being used magpies don't like pins <laughs> i'm just going to put that out there we're not keen on pins. Well, I'm not keen on pins, that's for sure. Okie dokie. I think I'm pinned up. If I wanted to, I could go in with a glue stick and position these in, but I'm not even going to bother with that. I tell you, I'm feeling in a renegade mood today. <laughs> Rebel without a cause. Here we are. I actually have got cause. I want to make this. Now, uh, <laughs> okay, as a unifying thread, I'm going to go with this green. It is, um, it's one of the petites, the sulky 12 weight cotton petites. Came in a pack, I think it was a Christmassy kind of pack. I'm sure it was. It's probably buried on my desk somewhere at the moment, but. This is kind of nice just to unify all the colours. So what I'm going to do is I am going to grab my needle. <laughs> it's also buried underneath here. Here we go. I would have tied it up, but I thought I wanted to show you um, how I would go about this. I've got to find a needle. I don't want to do. Okay. I'm going to get myself a fairly long piece of this cotton. Snippy snip. I don't know why I'm using my big, huge fabric scissors, but there you go. <clears throat> I'm trying to make sure that all the bits are covered up. And if they're not, they'll be covered up by thread and stitching and other additions along the way. So it's not going to just have these bits. Oh, no. <laughs> I'll probably throw in a few more bits along the way. You can do whatever colours you like, obviously, and also whatever 
um, additions you want to put in will be fine. So starting here, I mean you could go up and down if you wanted to. If you wanted to do an up and downer, I'm just going to do an acrosser. And I'm going to go through. And as I go, I'm just going to move my clip around a bit. I do appreciate that they did get in the way a little bit, but I just love them so much anyway. They make my life so much easier. So, as in the time-honoured way, I am going to do a running stitch all the way along there and then zigzagging all the way down until I get to the bottom. So, also in the time-honoured fashion, I'm going to put an audio book on while I do that. But you can see it's just a simple running stitch. It's just going to unify the piece and hold all these pieces down so I can mess around with it at my will. It doesn't have to take... You don't have to do it quickly. It is a slow stitch piece, so take your time. Have fun with it. Hello, Thread. He rolled in. <laughs> oh, it's very lively this morning, the Thread. So I hope you can see what I'm doing here. As I say, I've got the sun in my face at the moment, and I've got to do something with the blind. Um, but it's just literally... An in and out you running stitch. Don't pull too tightly, otherwise you'll end up gathering it and you don't want to do that. Just nice and stitchy and slow. And I am going to put on my audio book as I continue along with that. And I'm going to all the way to the bottom, just keep re-threading some thread up and just until I've got running stitch covering the whole piece and then I'll be back hopefully I'll have put the blind down by then and I'll be able to see what I'm doing <laughs> but yeah audiobook time stitchy time okay so I am back bits all over the place I should move that um so there it is it is all um slow stitched in a running stitch from top to bottom and that kind of just unifies all the pieces and holds everything down so that we can do other things with it. Um, let me put these clips away. Because usually I'll end up dropping them on the floor and then I'll stand on them. That takes away the pain-free element. <laughs> okay. When you've got to this stage, then you can start to add in other details you could add in embellishments and you can also add in stitching into your pieces so if you look at this one i've got some felt hearts with some beads added in for that one i've done a stitched spiral in a back stitch there it also makes it kind of go like coney shape i love that it just kind of it's a bit like those cone bras <laughs> it kind of goes that way but it just adds interest into your piece. So that's what you're wanting to be doing now. Adding in some embellishments. This is like a random stitch. This is just a stitch, a running stitch going the opposite way. I've got some um, zigzags going along that bottom part there. I've got some cross stitch going along that top bit there. You can add in whatever you like. If you've got other embe embellishments, such as the felt pieces, beads, um, if you've got some like um, brick crack or you know just anything anything that will go I'm looking in my little basket now yeah I've got loads of little bits in there that I could add in but I'm just going to stitch around each of the raw edges because if you look on this one I've kind of over sewed each of the raw edges on each piece if you've got big, big bits that you want to add in as well, that's another thing. If you want to like layer on top of and add another layer in, you might want to add some glitz in. Who knows? This is me. So I will probably maybe do that also on this one just by way of a change. I just want you to pick some ideas out for each of the areas on your piece. That's quite a big area. That could, that could quite easily spiral out. I'm liking that. Um, cross stitches just filling in the areas but also then going around each of the raw edges with an over sew so that's the next part you need to do so looking at this one 
over sew add in details and you know just enjoy enjoy it enjoy putting together the piece that you're making i also remember that i forgot to say how wide this hessian ribbon was so i thought at this point i might me measure it and i'll let you know how wide it is so it is eight centimeters or three inches so it's kind of like a three inch thick hessian ribbon eight centimeters or three inches and you get quite a lot of this so i've got plenty to go at and if you wanted to do some like stitchy rolls you know this would be a great backing for that it's it's stiffer than um the, the calico that i would usually use for different things but that in itself adds a different texture um i love hessian i have to say I don't know what do you call this burlap is it burlap that you call it um in the US but we I've been known as hessian very popular in the 70s we used to have lots of hessian things in the 70s and I just remember the smell of it I just love the smell I don't know there's something about it that I really enjoy um but yeah that's that's the size of it um, obviously you can use just plain old hessian or burlap and just cut whatever size you want but i just find this really handy on a roll i think this is from amazon kind of think it was from amazon um so it was one of those purchases and i thought oh that looks interesting and i don't know what i was going to do with this at the time but this is what it's working out for <laughs> anyway i'm going to leave you back to my audiobook and I'm going to start stitching into these pieces with running stitch or whatever other stitches I want to put in and I do like that spiral for that area there so I think I might do that um you want to be picking out threads that suit your piece so I've got two different greens there obviously that was the green I used to start off with I've got some gold I've just ordered myself another one of these because I'm using this one quite a lot and also, I've just discovered these now. This might be interesting to you. Uh, it's a sheepies um, yarn. It's a two-ply yarn. And it's called Maxi Sweet Treat. And it comes in lots and lots of different colours. But it's really good. I found stitching thread. It's cotton. And it's like a two-ply. It's kind of like a really nice thickness to it. And that adds another texture in. So I think uh why did i use it on here used it in quite a few places that's a thicker one there but yeah i have used it on there and i really like it so it's this one was from wall warehouse and it's called maxi sweet treat um if you are a crochet or a knitter i think it fits in with an, a wool yarn which is also a cotton but it's a thicker like a double knitting um and they do this in bigger sizes as well. So certain ones of these they do in a bigger size. So this is like 25 grams. I think they do a 50 gram ball as well. So if you know there's a colour that you use a lot of, it might be cheaper to get the bigger balls. Um, I can't remember what it's called. Sugar Rush, I think it is. Sugar Rush is this, but in a bigger ball. <laughs> that makes sense. That was on Wool Warehouse. I'll leave a link in the description below if you're interested to go and have a look but i think that's really good because these rolls have got 10 grams is it something like that hey yeah 10 grams i think they are and these are like 25 grams so it's like one and a half times more anyway that's that's by the by um so off you go go and do some stitching <laughs>